Hello. Welcome back. And as always, I hope you're doing well. Right. Today, I'm having a little break from Bruce Lee at Golden Harvest, guys. As you know, I've previously just watched The Game of Death three times, and I've got left the two documentaries at the end, Game of Death 2 and the alternative versions of Game of Death. And I will get around to reviewing them. But for this video, I thought I'd go and seek some other Bruce Lee news. Now, I found an article, or two articles really, on Variety and Screen Rant. And the Variety goes back to 2021. So it's it's a couple of years old now, this article. But I found it quite interesting because it's to do with the project that Bruce Lee was working on with James Coburn and Sterling Silliphant, The Silent Flute. As you all know, that film never really came to fruition and it ended up being The Circle of Iron with David Carradine and Jeff Cooper. I quite like the film. I would love to have seen Bruce Lee's vision. I could only imagine what it would have been like with James Coburn and Bruce Lee in the David Carradine role. That would have been amazing. And I do have the Bruce Lee original PDF script and the Sterling Silicon one, as it happens. But I quite like the film. The martial arts ain't amazing, but I think the philosophical side behind it is pretty powerful. I, right from the opening quote, it says uh, something like, you can tie two birds together. And even though it has four wings, it cannot fly. I love all that sort of stuff. You know, finger pointing away to the moon in Enter the Dragon. I'm, I'm quite into it. It was a bit like the Force in Star Wars. I was always quite down with that. And I think that's what done us with Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon. Not only was he an amazing fighter and kicked ass, and he had such screen presence, but it was this behind him that philosophical side behind him you know um and i loved all that but anyway i thought i'd go through these articles with you one from variety and one from screen rent the variety is the newer news obviously um but it's 2021 but i can only put it down that this production has kind of come to a halt because of the the pandemic but um yeah i thought i'd read it out to you and go through let you know some of my thoughts and maybe you can let me know some of yours Right, so the first part of this comes from the... And I'll link these both below, the Screen Rant and Variety. It's on a couple of other websites. So the other ones that I found, I'll link them all down below. So you can have a read for yourself. Because I'm no reader, really. But anyway, bear with me. Right. Jason Cothery, a Hong Kong-born entrepreneur and film producer who was an executive producer on Vin Diesel starring Bloodshot. I didn't see that. Has acquired all the rights to the silent flu. The Spiritual Martial Arts Project, co-written by martial arts icon Bruce Lee in 1970. The project is to be set up as a limited series with John Fusco from Marco Polo as a screenwriter and executive producer. Right, so let's give you a little bit of background on the silent flu. For those of you that don't know, I'm assuming all of you Bruce fans know all of this and I'm sort of just rehashing old news. But for those that don't know... Here we go, right. Now, during the late 60s, Bruce Lee was on track for his film career to take off. He had already co-starred in the ABC TV series The Green Hornet as Kato, but yet to become a big movie star. However, he did have a lot of relationships with several major figures in Hollywood. Many were actors that he had become acquainted with for his reputation in martial arts. Lee taught Kung Fu to several celebrities during these years, Two of these were screenwriter Serling Silliphant and A-lister Hollywood actor at the time, James Coburn. Together with Coburn and Silliphant, Lee came up with an idea for a martial arts movie and the three co-wrote a script titled The Silent Flu and managed to get Warner Brothers involved. See, I didn't know that. According to a foreword included in the script by Lee, the point of The Silent Flu was to demonstrate the great difference between the Oriental and the Western thinking. Lee's intention was to tell a deeply philosophical story that explored the mental aspects of the martial arts and the idea of self-mastery. Their script centered around a young martial artist named Cald, whose main objective was to find the book that would unlock the path to true enlightenment. Of course, getting to the book was to be filled with challenges, 
Lee, Coburn and Silliphant pack called Journey with trolls and obstacles that would stand in his way. The movie was supposed to end with Cord finding nothing in the book but mirrors, and the purpose of this was to send the message that a person can only find real enlightenment from within. Now, I'm down with all this. Do you remember the Piers Burton uh, interview that Bruce Lee done? You could really tell Bruce had this self-discovery. To me, okay, to me. Ultimately, martial art means honestly expressing yourself. Now, it is very difficult to do. I digress. Let's carry on with the article. Bruce Lee expected to have a starring role in the silent flu, but he had no intention of playing the main protagonist, who was supposed to be a white character. Instead, Lee was to play various martial artists who would encounter Cord and teach him Kung Fu and other valuable lessons along the way. That would be the David Carradine's character, obviously. As for the role of Cord, Lee originally hoped that he could get Steve McQueen on board. Like Coburn, Steve McQueen was a close friend of Lee and who at the time had trained with him on a regular basis. Given that the actor had recently starred in critically acclaimed box office hits like The Sand Pebbles and Bullet, it would have been a great hire. However, Steve McQueen refused to take the part, claiming that it wasn't going to help Lee launch a movie career for himself. Lee was angry that Steve McQueen turned him down, but he remained undeterred and turned his attentions to James Coburn, who had already been actively involved in making the silent flu happen. It was agreed that the two would star in it together, with Coburn playing Cord and Lee playing the Kung Fu mentors. Would have been amazing, wouldn't it, with Bruce and James Coburn? Once they had the script ready, scouting out locations for filming was unfortunately the furthest Lee, Coburn and Silliphant were able to get in the making of the movie. They travelled to India and began looking for ideal locations. Now this is where Bruce Lee obviously first saw the pagodas and come up with the idea for the game of death. During this time, their plan for the silent flute fell apart. Though Lee and Coburn were good friends, the two struggled to get along, and one biographer said that part of the problem was that Lee felt like Coburn, and not him, was being treated like a movie star. In the end, the two weren't able to work things out, and both actors abandoned the project. Shortly afterward, Lee was cast in The Big Boss, and thus began his days as a martial arts film star in Hong Kong. Kind of Bruce done the Clint Eastwood thing? You know, do you remember Clint was trying to get into Hollywood and was struggling and so he went to Italy, done a few films with Sergio Leone the rest is history, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly fistful of dollars and a few dollars more uh, and Bruce done a similar thing you know, he, he went to Hong Kong signed a two picture deal with Raymond Chow and Golden Harvest and under the direction of Lo Wei, Bruce Lee made the big boss Fist of Fury and become a phenomenon, anyway again I digress, I will get through this guys some time passed before Coburn and Silliphant decided to revisit the silent flute, but by this time, Lee had already moved on to other things, and Coburn said in an interview that when he tried to convince Lee to rejoin the project, the actor was no longer interested in the movie, and he told Coburn, You can't afford me now. Bruce gave up on the silent flute, but Sterling Silliphant never did, and he reworked the script with Stanley Mann and transformed it into the Circle of Iron in 1978. Coburn was replaced with Jeff Cooper and David Carradine took the role that Lee had intended for himself. Interestingly, David Carradine is the same actor that played the lead in the Kung Fu TV show, a role which Lee had auditioned for. Well-known actors like Christopher Lee, Eli Wallace and Roddy McDowell were also cast in the film as well. The Circle of Iron, which gave Bruce Lee a writing credit, kept the premise of his silent flute script, but also made some big changes. The graphic violence and sexual content was taken out, and some comedic scenes were added that weren't in the original. Right, this goes back now. That, that was Scream Rant. This bit goes back to the Variety News from 2021. Now, talk about ahead of its time. Check this out. The story of the silent flute is set in a dystopian future after mankind had suffered from pandemics, fires, and civil wars. Really? That was ahead of its time. And where all weapons and combat arts are banned. It follows a raw fighter who overcomes grave obstacles and loss to reach enlightenment and become the best fighter in the world. The Silent Flute film script was a five-year collaboration between Lee and his friends and martial arts students. 
Oscar-winning writer Sterling Silliphant and Oscar-winning actor James Coburn, it encapsulated Lee's vision for the true essence of the martial arts and the meaning of life and was his boldest creative passion project. It remained unfinished after Lee's death in 1973 cut short his brief film career. The rights to the silent flu were purchased from producer Paul Malansky from Police Academy fame. Sasha Malansky, Kurt Firth and Arlene Howard all to be credited as executive producers in this. Cothry is a former CEO of Valiant Entertainment, a US-based superhero entertainment firm that secured a five-film deal with Sony Pictures. Despite having been untouched for half a century, the silent flu conveys groundbreaking themes for today, and my ambition is to do justice to the global icon's powerful and inspiring cinematic vision, said Cothry. Having closely studied his life and career, I'm committed to bringing together the best talent in the world to make the silent flute for millions of Lee fans and honor him. I like that. Fusco, who recently delivered The Highwayman for Netflix, is a black belt martial artist in three different disciplines. He studied Lee's Jeet Kune Do philosophy under several of Lee's former students. What Bruce wrote along with Sterling Silliphant and my late friend James Coburn was ahead of its time and transcends action drama in profound and provocative ways. What we hope to do is open up the canvas of his story world and honour his vision in an exciting way that epic long form narrative can do today, Fusco said. So yeah, what do you think about him reworking Bruce Lee's original idea i mean i hope they go back to this original bruce lee source that was a little bit more violent a little bit more sexual i guess i mean i haven't read the script yet but i'm gonna i've got like i said i've got the pdfs now but as we all know um warrior the tv series i've just literally finished season three i see shannon lee in it as well in one episode um i think it's fantastic it really holds up well now based on bruce lee's idea but literally bruce had a whole script for this and the concept, you know, the essence of martial arts, it could be quite amazing. I mean, I'm a bit of a fan of the old film, I won't lie. I love the music in it. And I'm a bit of a fan of David Carradine. I know a lot of people just go, no, he's crap. I loved him in Kill Bill. But for me, growing up with Kane in Kung Fu, it's what I grew up with, Master Pole and Grasshopper and all that. Like, I used to love it. And I'm going to buy this on Blu-ray. It's on Blu-ray now. I've only got the DVD. I had it for years. I'm quite excited about it. I'm assuming we've not heard nothing for the last couple of years because obviously the pandemic and Hollywood writers are all sort of been on strike. But I think things are starting to happen again. What are your thoughts on this? Would you like to see a reworking of... Bru I mean, anything to keep his name going. But would you like to see a reworking of his original script, The Silent Flute? Or do you think you should be left behind because Bruce isn't in it? Let me know your thoughts, guys. Uh, I'm really interested. But I was quite excited to read it. Like I said, I was having a little poke around the internet to see what I can come up with. And there is news. It's only a couple of years old, but there is news. So who knows? What's this space, I guess? Right, and with that, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I'll be back with another ramble real soon. You all take care of yourselves.